All right. Good morning, guys. Happy Friday. Do a quick sound check here. Make sure we are good to go, and then we'll jump right in. And I've got the uh, the last ten trades we've done here in the mastery. So we had losses in AMD, Square, and Crowd, and then we had winning trades in the S and P futures, Bank of America, Microsoft, Best Buy, Google, and now we got open trades in Microsoft in the crude oil futures. Speaking of the futures. Um, Got the NQ down about 1%, S&P futures down 0.6, the YM down 0.5, and the RUT down 0.6. The one green spot is crude oil. Crude oil up about 2%, so that's working to our benefit. But for the, uh, the NQ here, we had some pretty good short squeeze action yesterday. Right, a, good, uh, a good $400 turnaround. They got it back above that 21. They closed it back above that 21. And now we're getting a bit of a flush here. So we got that box, right? Been talking about that box all week. Above that daily 50 and below that 21 EMA. If they take it back into the box, we're right back where we started. We got a lot of squeezes, a three-day, a two-day, and a daily. Trying to call for direction back in that box. It's not an easy game. Below that 50, you can look for a short. Above that 21, you can look for a long. So today's going to be a, a bit more of the same. Hurry up and wait. Got to see if the Bulls can keep it above that 21. And then S&P Futures here. They had it back above that 21. And now back under we go with a squeeze setting up here on the daily chart. So it's a, it's a tricky market, right? They flush it. You think here comes a big pullback. They pop it. You think here comes the big rally. At the, uh, the end of the day, it's a big old glorified chop fest. As a result, not the easiest to trade. And then we did pick up some Microsoft yesterday. But here's the thing. You know, Microsoft looks great. Google looks great. Amazon looks good. Um, I like Coinbase. I like a few other setups. If they can't keep the NQ above that 21 EMA, they're probably not going to work. So as far as the focus for today, you got to make that your major focus. Before you're looking to get long, before you're looking to get on some fresh shorts, keep your focus on the QQQ. Keep your focus on that 21 EMA. Below it, we're back where we came from, the almighty box. Above it, if they can try to stabilize it, then I think things are a bit more aligned for a push higher next week. At the moment, though, it is uh, it is a mystery to me. And then on the leaderboard here, got the updated leaderboard from last night. Amazon and Google, a perfect 120. A lot of energy stocks, right? FANG, Oxy, COP, EOG, XOM, XLE. You've got Microsoft with a 112 out of 120. Pretty good. You've got Coinbase with a 99, Netflix with a 99. Pretty good improvement yesterday from NVIDIA. NVIDIA went from, I think, a 50-ish to a 97. Now, subject to change, of course, but the QQQ... QQQ went back to a 96, and the S&Ps went back to an 80. It's probably going to change a little bit here at the open. A lot of back and forth. We saw some pretty good progress from Apple. For the most part, Apple's been negative, and they got Apple up into a 28 yesterday. Now a 28 out of 120. Far from being really good. But there was a little bit of improvement. And then Tesla. Tesla remains a bit of a stinker with a negative 13. And then towards the bottom end, you've got J&J, UNG, Riot, UNH, Starbucks, Boeing, Lulu, Adobe, and a few more. So again, not to be repetitive. I can't buy the good-looking setups. 
And I've got Microsoft, but as far as Google, Amazon, etc., I can't buy them until I get a bit more clarity here from the QQQ. And so far, based on this morning's action, trying to get that clarity might continue to be a little tricky. But the setups that I do like, um, take a look here at Microsoft. And it's the kind of setup that works really good if you got that wind at your back. If the S&Ps are pushing higher, if the QQQ is pushing higher, something with this kind of structure and this kind of setup, they tend to do really well. If the S&Ps and the QQQ just crap the bed, then I don't think it matters how good your setup looks. They're going to fall victim to the overall market. But for Microsoft, we have a two-hour, four-hour, a daily, two-day, and a three-day squeeze. Daily chart gets a 10 out of 12. We've got the slingshot signal in the squeeze. Good structure. It trades above the trailing stop. It trades above that 21 EMA. And you got buy signals on the two hour, one hour, 30 minute, and 15 minute. Again, if they can hold the QQQ and then try to push that thing higher, then I think you're looking at Microsoft. If they fail to do that, I don't think you want to buy Microsoft. So keep an eye on that one. And then Google and Amazon, right, they had the perfect scores last night. They don't so much have a fresh, uh, a fresh setup. They're a little far above their 21. They don't have a daily squeeze. But as far as leadership and the tech names, that's the, uh, the best of the best. Now, Google did have that weekly squeeze. If they can hold the QQQ, I think you should get continuation higher from that weekly squeeze. If they can hold the QQQ, even though that's a really good looking setup, that might pull back on you. And then Amazon, Amazon had a two-day squeeze and a daily squeeze, both of which are fired to the upside. So again, I don't think it's a fresh idea, but a pretty good looking chart. And then two more that I liked here were Coinbase and NVIDIA. And it looks like NVIDIA is going to gap down to about 900 bucks, which... Frankly, not a big gap down. So it looks like NVIDIA should hold some structure here. We've got that daily squeeze. They got it back above that 21 EMA. We've got a 7 out of 12 on the big three score. And we are getting that slingshot coming through. And that'll be the key. Right? They got to keep on printing that slingshot arrow. The trend is good. The structure is good. You've got that squeeze. They broke momentum. After breaking momentum below zero, if they can keep on printing that slingshot, then they can work on taking it higher. If the QQQ gives it the big thumbs up, one hour, 30 minute, and a 15 minute buy signal. So am I going to jump in and buy NVIDIA first thing this morning? No. If I can get what I'm looking for from the QQQ, then I'm a bit more interested. And if we can get a better QQQ, I think eventually they're taking that squeeze towards 950, maybe up to about 980. And then Coinbase, the big coin. Buy signals on the one hour down to the five. Four hour and a daily squeeze. Daily squeeze has a 10 out of 12. Good structure. Above that trending stop. Above that 21. And another example of the slingshot squeeze. Now, coin's going to move with QQQ, but it's also going to move with Bitcoin. So if we take a look at the Bitcoin futures, they are flat. A little bit uneventful. Two-hour, four-hour daily squeeze. And for the most part, the daily squeeze is in pretty good shape here. Slingshot signal above that 21, above that trailing stop. Structure label is bullish, and they got a 10 out of 12. We can also look at BITO, the, uh, the Bitcoin ETF. And that's pretty similar. Daily squeeze, slingshot, good structure. 
with a one hour and a 30 minute squeeze below the surface. So again, I can't go buying Bitcoin. I can't go buy some coin. I can't go buying more Microsoft or NVIDIA or Google or Amazon until I get a bit more clarity from the QQQ. It had a great short squeeze going yesterday. So the action was promising. The quick pullback to the 21 EMA. Again, it makes it a bit more of a mystery. Best case scenario today for the Bulls, they defend that level. And then they try to work on taking it higher. I think the worst case scenario for everybody, uh, the Bulls and the Bears, they take it back in the box. And then we're back to uh, a giant chop fest, which I think we all learned being in that box. It's not the easiest thing to trade. Swing trading, not all that easy. And even day trading, not all that easy. They got to keep it north of that 21 or for a better short. They got to take it south of that daily 50. So I think today is going to be very much a day of patience for the Bulls and for the Bears. And then we'll take a quick look here at the other futures. Um, the Dow Jones. That's pretty rough. All right, that's not too good. Under the falling 21. We've got a negative shift of the trailing stop. We're under the daily 50. And we've got a negative one on the big three score. So it's not the uh, not the perfect short. But it does begin to lean a little bit more bearish with a negative one. And then you've got sell signals on the four hour, the one hour, the 30, the 15, and the five. And then the rut, the IWM futures. Not that great either. They took it back above the 50. Now we're breaking back below the 50. Negative one under the trailing stop. And uh, a lot of squeezes here. One hour, a daily, a two day, a three day, and the weekly. Under that daily 50, the odds would favor they want to take that squeeze lower. So the small caps, the IWM, or the, uh, the Dow rather, they're in pretty rough shape. I would say the S&P futures, they, uh, they leave a lot to be desired. Back under that 21 EMA. The NQ was the best looking one last night. And now we're getting that test of that big level. Got to see if the Bulls can fight the good fight. So for those of you in the mastery, um, we'll manage our risk here in Microsoft accordingly. Then the good news is we got crude oil moving in the right direction. Um, so if anything, today in our portfolio, we'll have a little bit of balance. Microsoft might gap down about a half a percent. And then on the other end, we got the crude oil going up about 2%. A little bit of balance. But all right, guys, I got to keep it short and sweet this morning. We got some uh, construction workers here. And they're going to start pounding away here any minute now. Um, so any questions, throw them at me. And then we'll call it a session and we'll see what today's got in store. But man, what a what a tough market. You know, I would love nothing more. You know, for my own ego to uh, to jump on the mic and say, hey, here's exactly where the market's going. And this is exactly what we should be looking to do. I'd be a bit of a fool to try to do that this morning. Watch your key levels. Keep it uh, keep it simple. And like we talked about yesterday, don't got to be the first guy or gal to get long or short. Promising action yesterday, but they're, uh, they're kind of giving it back. We had a $400 turnaround. And now they're giving back about 200 bucks of that. It might be a bit more of an iron condor market. Not my favorite, but that might be the case here. You sell some out the money calls, you sell some out the money puts, and you go walk your dog. 
could be that kind of market. Or if you do an iron condor, that might guarantee we're going to get a huge move. So maybe be a little careful with the condors as well. Yeah, David, same um, same game plan as always for Microsoft. The, uh, the typical management of that daily squeeze. Below that 21 EMA, I've got to tap out. They break that daily 21, I've got to bow out gracefully. If they can hold it above that level, uh, we got about three or so weeks to expiration. Then we'll try to let the QQQ fight the good fight. However, even if um, you know, even if Microsoft can hold around that 21 EMA, and then the NQ gets a really big break below it, that wouldn't be my favorite situation either. You know, Microsoft might hold up. Microsoft might look good. But the probabilities game would suggest if the QQQ goes back into the big box, Microsoft's not going to have too much wind at its back. That becomes a bit of a, a Lamborghini with no gas kind of situation. Yeah, good looking chart, good looking pattern. Signals, you got the squeezes, but if there's no gas in the tank from the QQQ, that might just mean Microsoft's a big, uh, a big chopper. And if we're buying those calls, we don't want a big chop fest. We want the push. We want the breakout. And we're looking for a move into about 435. So it's kind of 50-50. Part of the management will come down to the QQQ. Part of that management will come down to Microsoft itself. A little bit more emphasis on the QQQ, if that makes sense. Um, any short setups? Yeah, we got a few. So um, look at my notepad here. One that I liked from yesterday was ARC. The ARC ETF. You've got a daily squeeze. You've got a negative four on the big three score. Sell signals, broken structure. Under the trailing stop. Under the 21 and under the 50. However, I think the same rules apply for the short side. Last, you know, five or 10 days or so, all you're getting here from ARC is a lot of chop. It's a good looking short side up, but you're not getting that big break lower. And I think a big part of that reason is the QQQ has just been a big chop fest. So I still think getting, getting swing short could be really tough if we're above that daily 50. So my thinking would be a bit more, right, if, I think the, uh, if I think the market's going to fall apart today, if I think we're setting up for a bigger flush, maybe I want to go day trade arc. Find a lower time frame squeeze, find a lower time frame sell signal, try to catch that intraday flush, but then ideally not go to bed with a short on if the QQQ is still above that daily 50. Right, the, uh, the rules apply to both sides. QQQ in the box. Getting swing long can be tricky. And also getting swing short can be really tricky. But I like ARC. Um, I think on a rally, I like Home Depot for a short. That structure is pretty busted. And then you had T-Mobile. But again, more of the same. Really good short setup. You're not getting that big flush. All you're getting here is a lot of back and forth. If the QQQ were to break that daily 50 support, then I think everything goes lower. T-Mobile included. There was INTU. Same thing. And then I think Shopify came up on the scans. Yeah, Shop's, Shop's doing a pretty good job of working as advertised. That squeeze fired short yesterday. So you could probably look for continuation lower down towards that daily 200. 67 to 68 buckaroos. 
Um, Claudia, Microsoft had the slingshot squeeze. All right. If we're not taking the A plus setup, we're taking the slingshot squeeze. Um, very much like our trade in Microsoft from back here. We bought it on that candle on the slingshot. Same thing with uh, with BAC. We're taking our calls here in Bank of America on that slingshot. Now, BAC did go from a slingshot to an A-plus setup. But we're looking for either or. But all right, guys, I got to let you go here. I got the construction guys knocking on my door. So I'm going to let them do their thing. For those of you in the mastery, I shall keep you updated. Um, but so far, it's looking like a little bit of balance in our account this morning. Now, there we go, crude. You know what wouldn't suck? It wouldn't suck if crude could take out the highs today. And remember, we're looking for a move towards 90 bucks. So if we're up there around 89, 89.50, we should have a really nice open profit. So I like the action in crude. I don't like the action in the QQQ. And we'll see what that means here for the Microsoft. But it does look like Microsoft should hold above that 21, at least at the open. So we'll keep an eye on that. We'll keep an eye on crude. We will manage accordingly. And most importantly, we are not gonna be in any sort of rush. For, uh, for a fresh trade here. I wouldn't want to buy it right away. I wouldn't want to short it right away. I'm going to opt for a bit more of a take a step back and evaluate kind of game plan today. But all right, guys and gals, as always, thank you for your time. Apologies for having to cut it a bit short. And uh, I think the construction crew will be done in maybe a few weeks. So fingers crossed on that. But hey, have a great day. Finish out strong. Be mindful of your risk. Be patient. And I'll see you all again here on Monday morning. Same time, same channel. Adios.